Here's the thing, and I get a lot of questions about this. We wrote about this in science-based medicine because China sort of added it to their recommendations of possible treatment, and there's published evidence supporting it. So what is the evidence? Why is there this belief that hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine can be effective against the uh, COVID 2 virus? The evidence is very preliminary and very weak, right? So you have mm-hmm. preclinical evidence, like in uh, vitro, you know, not in living organisms, but just like in a petri dish kind of thing, where they have some antiviral activity. That's great. Uh, that means that they deserve further study. But the, the number of things that have activity in a petri dish that translates to actually a useful clinical, you know, drug is very, very low. Right, the probability that it's going to that it's going to actually be useful at the, with this level of preliminary evidence is really is really low. Uh, part of the reason is it takes a high dose. Mm. So we need to know at doses that are necessary to alter the course of an infection, you know, of COVID-19, are those doses safe, right? Would it actually reduce, you know, the duration or severity of the disease? We do not know that yet. There has been only one uh, sort of anecdotal sort of open label study. The French one? Yeah, the French one, which is being touted. It's like, okay, well, there's, there is one study, but it's a horrible study. It's a horrible study uh, because it, it not only is it open label, it, was not, it wasn't a clinical outcome. They were using right. the, just the detection of the virus. And the hasn't method- been peer reviewed either. I heard. Yeah, and probably because it would not, it probably wouldn't get published if it were peer reviewed because it, the results, the methods were terrible. I'll just tell you like that. What for me is the worst thing. They did not do an intention to treat analysis. So what they did was they only included people who were able to complete the the study. But there were six people who dropped out. They all dropped out because they were sick. And they like they they got admitted to the ICU. You know, nobody from the control group dropped out, and so do you see how that biases the outcome, right? If yeah, if the people right, that's like if a, you know a drug kills some kills people, and, and you don't count them in the final analysis. Uh, yeah, it, there's a name for that, right? Like survivorship bias. Yeah, it's a survivorship bias. Yeah. I mean, it makes the drug look better because only the mm-hmm. the people who weren't that bad in the first place you know, completed the study. So it really invalidates the results, in my opinion. Uh, so these, there was, you know, those, those results, I think, are, you know, not only not only preliminary, but just horrible methodology, maybe not even publishable. So that's why this was sort of released pre-print, you know, and the doctors are saying, well, we wanted to get it out there because it's important. It's like, yeah, you could also argue that it's irresponsible.